We now know for sure that under these men, James Comey and his deputy, Andrew McCabe, the FBI interfered in the 2016 election to help Hillary Clinton and hurt Donald Trump. We know that the Trump-Russia collusion investigation was a hoax that should never have happened, that the Justice Department and the FBI failed to follow the law, that the establishment's beloved Mueller report was not an honest investigation, but a partisan cover-up. We now know that Hillary Clinton herself cooked up the entire phony Russia collusion narrative, that in July 2016 she approved it as a distraction from her own rotten scandals. Special Counsel Durham referring to her scheme as the Clinton Plan. Russian intelligence believing that the Clinton Plan aimed to tie Trump to Putin and the Russian hack of the DNC. We also now know that MSNBC's brazenly dishonest and insufferably pompous pundit, then CIA director John Brennan, briefed President Obama and Vice President Biden, along with then Attorney General Loretta Lynch and other officials, about the Clinton campaign's anti-democratic plot. And not one of them said or did the slightest thing about it, allowing this massive scandal to unfold because it suited their partisan interests. Yes, the exact people who drone on endlessly with their lectures about protecting our democracy, who never stop falsely and corrosively branding their political opponents as threats to democracy. They're the ones plotting and scheming to subvert and undermine democracy at every opportunity. How they love going on and on about autocracy and authoritarian regimes like Erdogan's Turkey, Orban's Hungary. But when you have America's ruling political party colluding with the country's leading law enforcement agency and the apparatus of the security state to swing elections in its favor, how's that any different? Look how shamelessly they pushed all their reckless lies. This week, we saw cold, hard evidence that the Trump administration and the Trump family have eagerly ex uh, intended to collude with Russia, a hostile foreign policy to influence an American election. The Russians offered help. The campaign accepted help. The Russians gave help, and the president made full use of that help. And that is pretty damning. The Russians were successful. I don't think there's any way to read that report and not conclude they accomplished what they set out to do. They had an objective to sow discord and divisiveness within our society at large and to help uh, Donald Trump, and they succeeded. Yeah, Russia did sow discord and division, but not half as much as you, Hillary Clinton, as you, Nancy Pelosi, as you, Brennan, Biden, Comey, Schiff. You were the ones who did this to America. And now, in response to the Durham report, the FBI claims its current leadership took, quote, dozens of corrective actions which have now been in place for some time. And that if these had been in place in 2016, the politicization, quote, could have been prevented. Oh, really? Their so-called corrective actions were in place in 2020, yet the politicization just rolled on as if nothing had happened. In 2020, yet again, the FBI colluded with the Democrats, the intelligence agencies, and this time big tech too, yet again to help the Democratic candidate in a presidential election. Let's remind ourselves what happened. In 2019, the FBI obtained through a subpoena Hunter Biden's laptop, which contained evidence of Joe Biden's corrupt business dealings with a hostile foreign power while he was vice president. Soon after, the FBI started spying on Rudy Giuliani and learned that he also had the contents of the laptop and was working with the New York Post Miranda Devine on a story which would reveal in October 2020, a month before the election, the true extent of the Biden family influence peddling operation. So, the FBI, which alongside the Department of Homeland Security and other parts of the national security establishment, had for years been building a censorship by proxy operation with big tech, approached Facebook and Twitter and told them to expect a dump of anti-Biden Russian disinformation in October involving Hunter Biden. They knew this was false. They had the laptop. What they said to Facebook and Twitter was the actual disinformation, which Facebook and Twitter dutifully acted upon. So when Miranda Devine published her story in the New York Post, they immediately censored it. 51 former Intel officials wrote a public letter saying it looked like Russian disinformation. And as a result of all that, 
Most of the media ignored the Biden corruption story. And Biden himself was able to dodge questions about it in the presidential debate, which we now know was the entire point of the spy's lying letter, to give Biden ammunition to, quote, push back on Trump in that debate. This shameful, dirty trick, initiated by former CIA director Michael Morrell and the man who was our current Secretary of State, Tony Blinken. Vital information about the trustworthiness of one of the candidates for President of the United States was hidden from voters. That is what you call election interference. That is what you call meddling in an election. But it wasn't Russian meddling. Just like in 2016, it was FBI meddling. It is obvious that the FBI has been totally politicized. And under current director Christopher Wray, the politicization continues to this day, with the FBI's appalling treatment of conservatives, parents, Christians, the FBI seemingly operating as the armed enforcers of the Democrats' political agenda. As Durham points out, the answer to all this is not the creation of new rules, but a renewed fidelity to the old. It is impossible to believe that will happen under Christopher Wray. At best, he presided over and at worst, directed the FBI operating as the agent of a political party. And it's not just people like me saying this. It's coming from inside the FBI. Here's former agent, special agent, Nicole Parker. Over the course of my 12 plus years, the FBI's trajectory has transformed. The FBI became politically weaponized, starting from the top in Washington and trickling down to the field offices. And now here's Chuck Todd on NBC just this morning. FBI misused surveillance tool on January 6th suspects, BLM, Black Lives Matter arrestees, and other Simone. I, look, trust in the FBI is eroding left and right. Um, feels like we're in the moment that we need a real church committee, that this is a moment like Jay, when the J. Edgar Hoover FBI clearly was no longer helping the American people. There was a moment. This feels like we might be in one of those moments. The FBI, as currently run, is a threat to the fabric of America. And if Democrats truly cared about attacks on our democracy, they would be as outraged over this as Republicans rightly are. Get rid of Ray, clean out the barn, restore our trust in federal law enforcement. That is the next revolution we need.